Hi, Jason Knott with CE Pro, and I am excited to be joined today by Jason Savage, Western Regional Technical Specialist at Sony. Hi, Jason. Hey, Jason. How are you? It feels like I'm saying hello to myself, which is kind of odd, but uh, you're definitely not me, and I'm definitely not you. <laughs> so we're we're you overloading doing? people with Jason today. We are. <laughs> Kids of the 70s, probably. Yeah. At least we aren't wearing a mask, right? That's right. No <laughs> hockey masks. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Let's jump right into it. We're talking about projection technology today. And beyond price, what are some of the key factors that integrators should be looking into when they're selecting their projectors? Well, you know, one of the things that we hear a lot about, of course, is light output um, resolution. Those are the, you know, those are the big buzzwords. But I think, honestly, uh, one of the key factors integrators should be looking for is trying to buy the best combination of components that they can for the budget that they're given. So instead of focusing maybe on the this is the brightest one or this is the whateverest one, let's look at the construction and look at the build quality of the of the projector itself. How close is it to what the professionals are using? What level of technology are we talking about? Is it, you know, is it DILA? Is it SXRD? Is it DLP? Is it L C D? You know, and is there a is there a better option in my price range? Or what's the best solution in my price range, you know, based on, on the budget. And by and large, uh, Sony specifically has lots of different steps. We start all the way down for true 4K, three chip, you know, SXRD premium uh, projection solution. You know, we start at $5,000 retail for real 4K, no e-shift, no pixel manipulation. So I think, you know, kind of keeping those factors in mind is what's the best thing that I can get uh, for my allowable budget, it should be probably one of the first things that you're looking at as opposed to what's the brightest thing I can get or what's the, you know, what's the cheapest thing I can get. That's great advice. I think finding that right product for the right application should should always be the first point of a criteria. But then you look at some of the other things that we hear from integrators. They're looking at product exclusivity. They're looking at product availability. They're looking at uh, the feature set, obviously, from the technology standpoint, of the course. margin. These are a lot of things that Sony brings to the table. Yeah, we've got, uh, you know, again, we've got true 4K performance that starts at $5,000. We've got lens memory. We've got HDR capability. We've got all of these other buzzwords and things that are, you know, really critical to integrators these days. We have some of our entry level projectors are probably the most installation flexible products that we make. Uh, in two piece projection land, uh, mainly because they are front ventilating. So the the current models, the 295ES and 695ES actually are intended to fit into niches or into, into a shelf where you can literally back the unit up against the wall uh, with no ventilation uh, considerations to the back of the unit. As long as you're not obscuring the front, you can have, you know, screen sizes, you know, 150 inches diagonal or, you know, 12 ish plus feet wide uh, with a, you know, with a, you know, really, uh, shall we say, a, a architecturally aesthetic, you know, aesthetically pleasing kind of recipe. You know, they're really intended to be put into cubby holes or put out of the way. And, you know, that's, you know, baked into the design uh, of the projector itself. We want you to be able to, uh, you know, be able to replace that large flat panel or, you know, have a have a realistic alternative to larger flat panels with, uh, with two-piece projection. Certainly it's more profitable than just slapping a big old TV up on the wall. But, uh, you know, those kinds of things, uh, design flexibility, giving you huge focal range to work with. You know, our projectors, uh, you know, kind of like a 1.4 to 2.8 kind of range of magnification. So uh, to do some quick math here, if you take any of those numbers that you see for a focal range on a projector, you know, 1.4, 1.28 to 2.8 or whatever it's going to be, and you multiply that, by your screen width in inches, that will give you your throw range. Uh, you know, you know. Again, some quick math here. If you had a screen that you could fill at, you know, 15 feet lens to screen with a Sony, that same projector could fill that same screen at 30 feet away. So again, lots of flexibility, lots of tools to be able to get some projector placement um, into your jobs, into your projects, as opposed to just again, you know slapping a bracket on the wall and hanging a TV up. That's, um, you know, it's certainly a, a faster way to do business, but it's definitely not a more profitable way. And I think that's, you know, one of the messages that gets lost with two-piece projection. It's a hugely profitable segment, um, especially for video and one of the last ones out there. So, 
you know, Sony TVs are definitely a profitable uh, avenue to go down. But if you're really trying to make some money on a on a you know, on a video system, uh, projection is definitely where the money's at. Uh, I've got a little bit of a breakdown here, and even on a like we'll say a fifteen thousand dollar total turnkey system, you know, with an eighty-five inch TV, audio, labor, cables, remote, and stuff like that. If you can get there with that, you know, you're looking at probably about you know fifty-five hundred bucks roughly in 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 you know profit margin potential. That same system with a with a projector and a screen gets you up to about you know eight thousand bucks net profit. Mm-hmm.